Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I want to thank you so much for being here and thank you for watching. I've got a quick tutorial here on creating a junk journal page using digital image, using book pages, using stencils and stamps and scraps of paper and more. So I hope that you'll enjoy seeing this Enchanted Rose junk journal page. For this junk journal page, I've got an element from the Enchanted Rose digital download. I've just printed it on copy weight paper and I have the stencil that comes with the Enchanted Rose subscription box and a book page and I've got a few other supplies. I'm going to begin with this particular thing first which is one of the file folders that comes in the Enchanted Rose kit and I have about five sheets of those tear off little notepads and the first thing that I've done is I've gone around the edges with distressed ink walnut stain and I've put a paper clip on here to help hold it in place and we're going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right across here with a zigzag stitch. Okay I'm over at my sewing machine and I have a regular thread, regular needle, I have it set on zigzag stitch. Mine is electronic machine so I have the stitch width and length both set on two so it's kind of a narrow zigzag stitch. I will caution you that if you're going to sew make sure that if you've put glue on anything that it is dry before you start stitching. So what I'm going to do is just lay this down underneath here and then stitch right across the top. And there's the stitching across the top. I did this first because this step takes the longest, so I thought I'd go ahead and get it started. I'm going to use the best glue ever. My bottle is kind of dirty, but the best glue ever because it's a glue that when it air dries, it stays tacky. So what I'm going to do is put down just a little bead right across the top where I've stitched. And I'm going to set this aside to dry and we'll come back to it here in just a little bit. All right, so now I've got the rose stencil from the Enchanted Rose Kit and a book page. And we're going to get my spray box and we're going to spray this. I've got the Tattered Angels Enchanted Rose from the subscription box, Enchanted Rose. And what I'm going to do is just spritz all over this book page and the stencil at the same time. I've got one of my papers here that's basically text weight paper. This particular one is a green linen. I've got an abundance of it in my stash, so I'm trying to use it up. And I'm mopping up on the stencil, so I am taking my hands and rubbing all over on the back side of this paper to soak up the tattered angels that's resting on top of the stencil. I'm not spraying the back side of this because I plan to use it for another page. So what I'm going to do right now is just set this aside to dry. So you see there's the pattern. And then here's our page with the pattern, Tattered Angels pattern all over. I've got another piece of paper and this is a Junior Legal notepad paper. And I'm going to lay this into my spray box here. And I've got the half sheet stencil that comes with the Enchanted Rose kit. I'm going to lay that down on top. I am deliberately placing this piece of paper onto my mop-up paper underneath because it'll create a little bit of a pattern around it and I can use this later on. This time I'm going to grab the Lavender Rose from the Enchanted Rose kit and I'm going to spray mainly on this side. I've got another page that I'll lay on top to mop up. I like doing this technique because you get a two for one in a sense. You spray it one time and you get two different looks. So I'll set this aside and save it for another project. And then here is my page underneath. And you can see how that makes a little frame on here. Now I'll use my heat tool to dry these pages because you really don't want it wet when you go to fold or cut a piece of paper. For this page today, I'm going to make a basically kind of a collage on top of the book page, but I need to trim this piece. So let me get my paper cutter. So I'm going to trim off about two and a half inches on this top portion. So that gives me two pieces of paper that I can use to have some writing space. Next, I'm going to go around the edges with some Distress Ink Walnut Stain. I've got a book page that I sprayed Tattered Angels. This was the T 
teal rose onto a book page and I used the January or was it December? December Stencil Club, I believe it is. It's got the little dotted flowers in it. And what I want to do next is cut this to be the same width as this piece of paper. And then we're going to go around the edges with some Distress Ink. So we're starting to layer up my pieces here. I've got a piece of coffee dyed paper. I know, I coffee dyed paper. I have a tutorial that even proves that I did. And all I've done is cut this to be five inches by four and a quarter. And that's going to go in this section down here. So you can see how we're slowly starting to build up a little collage of papers. I think what I want to do now, though, is go ahead and rubber stamp on these. So let me grab a scrap of paper. So I've got the coffee dyed paper that I want to rubber stamp around the edges. And I also have this garden gate stamp. So we're going to stamp that first because I kind of want to guide the rest on where this is located. So I've got archival ink jet black. So I'm just going to ink this up. And I want to stamp this where it's coming off the page. So I'm kind of looking at the way my stamp is put together. And we're going to come in just a tad and then stamp. And you see how that makes the little gate. Next, I'm going to use from the shabby stitches. It's a little zigzag stitch. And I'm going to stamp coming from the side here. And then across the top, down the other side and then coming from the gate across. You see how that stamped all the way around? On this one, I know I wanna stamp the flowers across the top, so I'm just gonna grab the zigzag stitch and I'm just kinda of using this as a guide and we'll stamp down the edge. So now I can take this stamp off and set it aside and grab from the stitches set. This looks like embroidery stitches. We're gonna ink that up and I'm gonna stamp it across the top and then down this side. I'm not worried about the bottom because I am going to cover it up with this little, well, not that strip. This little strip will go kind of across the bottom there. On this one, I'm going to stamp across here and here and down the side. I'm not going to do the top because I plan to kind of cover that up. All right, so now that I have all of these stamped, I'm going to take my page and fold this in half. So now I know where my center is. Sometimes I'll go ahead just so I know and I'll use my distress inks. And if you really like that edge to be distressed, you can go around the edge now. All right, so I'm kind of gauging where I want everything by how big my page is and where I want everything to come together. I know I want this to come down here. Prior to the video, I made this little layered book page a pocket. So what I did was I sprayed a book page with the pink Tattered Angels from the Enchanted Rose Tattered Angels kit. Then I over stamped with the Bella Rose medium stamp all over. Then I took a paintbrush and painted with the stem cut Tattered Angels in where the leaves are. I took a darker Tattered Angels and colored in the flowers. So it just kind of gave this really cool background. I used the large butterfly and colored it in with the teal Tattered Angels and fussy cut and put that down. And I stitched around there. This was a punch. It's an old one. It's from Martha Stewart. And I just punched it on some light cardstock and used some Distress Ink to put on the back. I've added some tabs so that this can be a pocket. And that's going to go right down here in this area. So what I want to do right now is I'm just kind of gauging where I need to put everything. Okay, I think that's about right. So I'm going to put this piece down first. And this is one of those projects that if you like to sew, you could, instead of using the rubber stamps, you could sewn this to the book page. And I'll use my bone folder to kind of help smooth this glue out underneath, and it'll help get that page adhered all the way down. All right, so this is going to go right across the bottom. So I want to make sure that there's a nice, generous amount of glue right on that edge so that it doesn't catch in my pocket whenever I put stuff in it. All right, so you see how that's starting to come together? And then the pocket, I'm going to glue down here at the bottom 
overlapping that green piece. I could have cut this piece a little bit uh, bigger so I didn't have to put the green, but I kind of like that little green touch or teal touch peeking out behind the pocket. All right, I'm just going to flip this over and then start collaging on this side. So this is going to go across the top here. This is going to go down here at the bottom. I want this down far enough that I have another piece of that book page that I've notched and I've gone around the edge with distress inks. It's going to go across the top here. I've got other elements that will help cover up this corner. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down here in the bottom. Now this could have been a pocket if your paper was sturdy enough. This tends to rip when uh, it's coffee dyed because it makes the page a little bit more fragile. So I didn't uh, double it up and make it to a pocket, but I could have. I've got from the kit, the Bella Rose, uh, no, not the Bella Rose, the Enchanted Rose kit, one of the circle elements that's going to go down here in the corner. And I've got another element that's going to go here. So I want to make sure that I glue this down, that there's enough space. Okay, so I'm going to put this down first. And then I'm going to put this right on top. Okay. Then I have this little flag that's going to go across the top here. So see how it fills that corner in? And you could make this a tuck spot. I'm not going to. I'm just going to glue it all the way down. Then I've got one of these fussy cut words. And I've got a piece of fabric here. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of fabric and cut it to give it a little frame. And I'll glue these two together. And I'm just using a Lean's Tacky Glue. I buy the large bottle and then I squeeze it into this smaller bottle because it's easier to hold. And the lid that I have on this glue is from the easy squeeze clear gel tacky glue and I just like that lid so it's easy for me to close it up and keep my glue always ready to be dispensed okay I'm liking that how that's coming together so this one is going to go right in here I can overlap it or bring it down I think I'll kind of overlap it just a tad this is also from the enchanted rose kit I've used components from all three of the kits, the subscription box kit, from the planner kit, and the large journal kit. I've got some of these little Prima paper flowers. I got them out when I was doing the ladies and flowers journal, and I decided that I would keep them out on my desk because they kind of matched the colors that I was working with with this kit. So I could use them up. I have so many in my stash. I need to use them up. I've got some flat back gemstones. So we're going to put those right in the middle of the flowers. I know I'm using bling. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay. And then we're going to go back on this side. And I've got this little page flag that's going to go on here. And then I've got made with or with love. So we're going to put that up here but I think before I put that down I want a piece of fabric so I'm gonna look here probably about that big yeah something like that so I'm just gonna put some dots of glue on the back side of this fabric and then we'll glue this on top and I've got another one of these flowers that we'll put right here all right so you're seeing how this is coming together how we have decorated our page we'll go back to it's almost dry. It should be clear. So I'm going to wait just a little bit longer and we're going to put some trim on that in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to the other side. And this is where I'm going to put this particular page, but I'm going to make pockets with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my scissors and come in here and just loosely fussy cut around. I'm not going to make it perfect. I'm just going to do it somewhat loosely all the way around. And something that I forgot to do first, which was to fold this in half, only because I want to know where the center is, so that when I go to put it down onto this page, I get it lined up. All right, so now I'm going to fussy cut this side out. All right, so now I'm going to take some Distress Ink and go across the edges. I've taken a book page, just in case it happens to be from a large family Bible, and I folded it in half and glued it together so that I could have a little bit sturdier paper. And the next thing I'm going to do is line this up 
along the edge here and glue it down. So I'll just put a little glue right along the edge and about half an inch in making a straight line. Then I'm going to line this up with the text and I'm using my bone folder to help smooth out that glue. I'm going to let that dry for a moment and flip it around and do the same thing on this side. All right, so now what I want to do is rip this out. And it's better if the glue is dry. So I'm going to start up here. I just made a little snip and then I'm going to use my fingers to guide down and just rip this out. And I'll use my scissors to trim off that edge like so. Now let's do it on this one. I'm going to take my distress ink and go along the edges of the book page. I've got a couple of strips of book pages, so what I want to do is make this pocket the full depth. So I'm just going to put some glue first underneath this area, in case it didn't get glued all the way down. And then I'll put a bead of glue down the edge. And I usually cut about a one inch by the length of the book page. And we're going to lay that in the glue. And then just kind of slide it up a little bit. And then I'll trim off the excess. And then we're going to take this piece on the side and do the same thing. Other side as well. And then I'm going to repeat this process on the other. So I've trimmed off the corners and I'll let this dry for just a moment and then we'll fold those tabs in. So while I'm waiting on those to dry, what I'm going to do is I'm folding my page in half and I'm lining it up with this portion. So I just want to make sure I've gotten the right spot. I'm just going to put some glue here and press this into place. All right, so I've got that all smoothed out and ready to go. So I'm going to fold in the edges. And now I'm going to glue those back basically where we took them off the page and you can't really tell that I fussy cut it away from this page. You can still see the other elements underneath. I'll go ahead and fold the page and make sure everything's working, looks good. All right, so let's put some elements in the pocket and we'll flip it back over and finish the card for the other side. I have the Botanical rose, I think that's what it is. Botanical cabbage rose, botanical rose. And there's smudges on my card. I'm not going to worry about it. It's part of the junk journal process. So I'm going to ink this up and we're going to stamp it on one side. So I'm going to come off the page just a slight edge and then stamp. I like the way that looks. I've already done another one. So there's another page that I've done. Set this aside. And I did it so that this side can go over here. I'll make sure that it's going down inside my pocket all the way. And then I've got this, and apparently I got some, I got it wet because this is a uh, digital download. So since I did that, Let's try something. Let's see if I can fix that. So what I'm going to do, because I got a little smooch on it, is I'm just going to take this to my sewing machine and stitch across theirs real fast. Just kind of make do with what we got, right? All right, let's see what we've got in my flowers. I've got a little teal flower. I think that would look good on there. Let's grab a rhinestone. I'm going to put that right here. And I've got this one that'll go on this side. So we'll put the mason jar on top so that kind of sticks out just a little bit. Show them all the way in. Yep. And then this is from the kit, the subscription box that has the uh, word search. I thought that would be really cute to go over here. So let's close this up. So we need to put some elements in the pocket there. 
I've shown this a few times where I take a piece of mop-up paper and I fold it to look like an envelope. So just fold this in at the top, fold it down, and then I fold it up just a little bit with a little bit of a gap. And I use one of the fussy cut elements from the kit to help close the tab. I used another fussy cut square. I over stamped it from the post uh, postal cube, I believe it is. And then this is from the postmark collage. I only stamped a portion of it. I want to add another saying up here. Get this out of the way. And we're going to stamp this right across the top. And I hope you like this one. It says enclosed advice. Isn't that kind of cute? I thought that'd be cute on there. So we're going to put this in our pocket. Now let's finish up this little element. So I put that glue on there because trying to put down sequin trim can be difficult. So I put the glue down and now I can just gently press the sequin strip right into that glue and it will stay on my page. I've got the word that says fly and I've got another scrap of fabric. So I'm just going to trim this just a little bit larger and then we're going to glue this down right here in the middle. Fly right in the middle. And then I have this new stamp. It's like a rose cluster. Uh, rose cluster? Rose something. I'm trying to remember what it was called. But I'm going to stamp it just below where the fabric ends. Because I just thought that gave it a nice little touch there. Don't you think? And then this is going to go inside this pocket. So there's our journal page. So we've got lots of collaged areas. So you have writing here and writing there. And then you have this whole area you can write. You can write on the inside of the envelope. And then you can write on this little notepad that I've put about five sheets of paper. You can write on the backer as well. And then when you flip this page over, you've got this area you can write in. You've got the mason jar you can write in. You've got the large journal cards you can write in. And then we've got over here. I hope you enjoyed seeing this tutorial. It was about 40 minutes is what it took me. And that was with it pre-planned, all laid out, ready to go. And of course, I'll edit this down to be a lot shorter. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Comment below if you have any comments or questions. Do check the description box to see a list of all the supplies that I used. And again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, why not? Please do so. Now I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, where I show how to make an entire journal. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye.